Okay, so it's five minutes past two. I think we start the afternoon session. Welcome back, everyone. So the first talk will be from Kasia uh, Wiegel, in this, which will be a title in the search of a jackson between Anomal 3 in decomposable planar lambda terms and beta 0 1 trees. And this one is actually quite a nice talk because it's started from a bijection from the one from last year's CLA. So we're really curious to hear more about it. So, Kasia, please go ahead. Thank, thank you, Michael. I hope you all see my slides and hear me well. Uh, so, this talk is covered by uh, Guan Ru, and I will explain soon uh, how he came into play how he started uh, doing in this Lambda business as well. So last year, um, uh, Noam had a talk and this talk was covered uh, with Jason Reed. And after his talk, I uh, wanted to see what it all was about and to, to, to recall some details. And at some point, one thing struck me, namely this conjecture. So I forgot about everything that I uh, so, so far about everything that I've learned, uh, I just focused on this very um, conjecture, uh, which was exactly in this form as what we saw recently. It was the slide by Noam. And the conjecture says that beta normal for in the composable planar, planar terms accounted by the OEIS sequence uh, A00257. So while I was, uh, since I was, uh, a postdoc in Vienna at that time, uh, I thought this must be easy for me. I'm this uh, Vienna uh, environment, so this Vienna atmosphere should work uh, pretty well and inspiring. And I can quickly find some uh, uh, some uh, recursive definition and so on, so use symbolic methods and uh, then standard methods of uh, analytic combinatorics. But it turned out that uh, that I failed. And uh, then I thought, okay, I cannot uh, do it like this. Uh, I should read something something more. Uh, so I uh, went to the OEIS uh, webpage uh, with this entry uh, 257. And uh, what, uh, what I liked about it is, well, were, those, uh, entry, were those descriptions uh, 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 about maps. So it turned out that the, the sequence uh, enumerates uh, some particular kind of maps. And uh, since I was uh, an office mate uh, of Guan Ru, and he was just finishing his PhD thesis uh, just in maps, so I thought, okay, we can work together, why not? And he is an expert in maps. I know something about Lambda terms, so we can uh, join the forces and somehow solve this problem. So, okay, I have to admit we didn't solve it. We have some ideas how to attack it. We have some partial results. Uh, I won't uh, prove the conjecture, but I hope we're on a good way. And uh, this can be also discussed during the open problem session. And if you have any ideas, it would be nice uh, if you could uh, give us a hand. And uh, here is a mind map showing some uh, combinatorial objects that are enum enumerated by uh, this sequence in question. Uh, what you can see here in the middle, there exists an, an explicit formula for the number of uh, those particular maps or beta zero one trees about which I will speak soon. And uh, as we hope, beta normal free in the composable planar lambda terms. And the formula is not really complicated. Uh, but what's interesting, what, what's interesting is that uh, when uh, some researchers were studying rooted by cubic maps, uh, they didn't uh, find a nice recursive description uh, of the, the sequence that enumerates, uh, for the numbers that enumerate uh, these objects. And this uh, formula was not derived uh, directly. The other objects that are interesting uh, that are in bijection with these rooted by cubic maps are uh, beta zero one trees. And I will uh, speak a lot about them because, because we really uh, concentrate mostly on those. But uh, the other objects which are also very nice are new, tamari, uh, new intervals in Tamari lattices and 
uh, Wenji's degree trees. I'm happy Wenji is here because I, I read his paper where, where he shows the bijection between uh, his degree trees and new interval uh, new intervals in tumor lattices, and I like the ideas there. Maybe he can also uh, help us somehow uh, with how to deal with this beta zero one trees business. Okay, and um, uh, because this is the first talk uh, where lambda terms appear, uh, probably I should just very quickly mention what they are for uh, those of you who have never heard about them. Uh, so uh, lambda terms are building blocks of uh, lambda calculus, which is the model of computation. But we can uh, forget about computations, about lambda calculus, because we will look at lambda terms as at some uh, particular unary binary trees. But uh, in general, we have a countable set of variables, and we build new trees in such a way that every variable is a term, every uh, application of two terms is a term, and uh, every abstraction is a term. Abstraction is this thing that we have here, and we write uh, lambda variable and the term that exists. So if I write lambda some variable x and the term, this is also a lambda term. And uh, here is a, an example of a quite big lambda term, the longest I could fit here on the screen. Uh, and of course, we cannot see much out of it. But what is important is that we don't care about this, the names of the variables here. All the variables uh, that appear here are bounds. So it means that every uh, variable has been introduced by some lambda, like here. And uh, what, what we really care about is which variable is bound to which, uh, to which lambda. So uh, here I uh, write down the, this lambda term just using colors. I don't need variables. So if we see the blue dot like here, it means that this is a variable that is bound to this blue lambda and so on. But of course, uh, this notation is also not very nice to deal with. So what we can do, we can, uh, we can um, uh, use another um, representation and we will represent lambda terms as trees. So now, uh, every unary operation, this is this abstraction, is uh, replaced by a unary node like this, and everything, uh, everything else goes uh, below. And if we have a binary node uh, here in this tree, it means that uh, like this, it means that we have an application, and this application doesn't have a sign here. It means that we have two terms that are applied one to another. So this is one big term, and this is another big term. But we don't really need to focus on this because we can um, get rid of uh, the names of the variables and, for example, use colors. But the nicer way is to use um, uh, arrows or connections uh, or those edges even mm, without uh, these arrow endings. So it means that the variable that is represented by this leaf is uh, introduced by the unary node or a lambda or an abstraction that is exactly here. So we have this structure, uh, which is a tree with some pointers added. And it's much nicer uh, to look at this structure, at least that's my opinion. But uh, as you might have noticed, um, um, in my title, there were many adjectives describing some very special lambda terms. And these terms indeed have many properties, which makes the whole picture much easier. So the first thing is that we consider only linear terms. So linear terms are such that every unary node has exactly one binding to one leaf. And there are no unary nodes that have no bindings. And of course, every leaf, uh, this follows from the definition of lambda terms, uh, is bound on exactly by one lambda. So this term that we have here to the right, oh, anywhere, but it's easier to look at this tree. Uh, so this term is, of course, not linear because there are many lambdas that do not bind anything. And the other reason is that there are some lambdas, like this one, that bind um, too many lambdas. We like, for example, this lambda, this unary node, because it has just one binding. And uh, because now linear terms 
um, uh, have a very nice tree representation, namely by unary binary trees, uh, in which the number of binary vertices is just by one smaller than the number of uh, than the number of uh, leaves and uh, the number of unary nodes. We can measure the size of a term uh, as the number of applications only. Okay, so I will write that now. The size of a term is 3k plus 2. Uh, I mean, all the vertices in the tree representing a term has uh, 3k plus 2 and nodes where k is the number of applications or binary nodes. So this will be our size of a term. And uh, now what we will do, we will uh, set We'll fix the order on leaves, and we fix the order from right to left. And now we join every leaf with the first lambda on the path that leads from this vertex to the nearest lambda that has, uh, hasn't been taken yet. And uh, the resulting structure uh, will correspond to a, um, to a planar lambda term. This is because uh, these lambda terms as viewed as these graphs uh, or maps for some reasons uh, are really planar. So I will show the example because otherwise it's difficult to understand anything. So here we have this skeleton. Here we have a unary binary tree that corresponds to some uh, probably many uh, linear lambda terms. And what we do, as I said, we fix the order on leaves. So there are four leaves here. And we take the rightmost one, and we found for, find for it the first free uh, unary node that lies on the path to the root. So this is the uh, corresponding unary node. And then we search for the first free uh, lambda for this one. So we have this, then we have this, and then we find this. And as you see, um, Having this operation, we of course have a planar, uh, we obtain a planar graph. So uh, I don't want to get into those details about maps and so on, but that's how we are going to uh, look at those uh, trees. We always encircle the tree from the right side and make those edges longer and longer so to encompass the already created structure. So here is a nicer picture uh, showing what I wanted to explain. And for those uh, who prefer to think more uh, in a more lambda calculus way, uh, here is what it means to be a planar term when we have a linear term. Uh, then the variables that uh, appear, like the occurrences of variables, are exactly in the order that they were introduced. I mean, the first. It's not exactly maybe what I should say, but it's again linking to the nearest lambda. Okay, and the size of this tree or this term is three because there are exactly three unary uh, binary nodes. So this is one, two, and here is the third one. Okay, there are more adjectives. With the closest uh, to, to the lambda, because in this example, like lambda is y point x. Uh, oh, you wrote something. I'm sorry. Uh, you asked. Um, uh, can you repeat? Because I hear really badly. Maybe it's not a good idea if I put the questions because you cannot uh, easily hear me. Uh, yeah, I hear you. But you wrote something. I guess this is not very important. But at least this is a kind of a question. One can read. Ah, okay. Uh, the convention of parents sizing. Uh, we, we parenthesize lambda terms as usual. So whenever we have an application, I'm sorry, I stopped writing. It is like this, M and P, let's say. Uh, then we parenthesize to the left. But whenever we have an abstraction, uh, should I write like this, lambda x, y, z, it's Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so this uh, denotes something like this: lambda x, lambda y, lambda z, and then the closing parenthesis. Does it understand? Uh, does does it answer your question? 
And here is, it was to Jason. And as for Sergey, uh, in terms of causes application to the rooms. Yeah, yeah, so uh, that's why I said that it's not, uh, it's, yeah, yeah, I said that I made a mistake. It's not the closest, but the, uh, it, it's not the second closest. It's the, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, so, Sergey, yeah, I don't understand you, actually. I'm sorry. Maybe we can discuss it later. I think that this figure here can uh, clear things up. So we find the first three lambda. Do you agree or not? I would like to know that we are at the same level. OK, I don't see any comments, so I will go on. Uh, how can I formulate? Okay, let's skip this question for now. Okay, I wanted to make it as uh, short as possible because uh, anyway, I have too many things to, uh, to 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 present. Okay, so we can discuss it later. Sorry. Okay, so the first, there are two more things that I have to explain. The first one is being beta normal. So a lambda term is beta normal if it doesn't contain uh, any Oh, I'm sorry. It shouldn't be written like this. It should be like this. Uh, lambda x uh, m applied to n. I mean, uh, uh, in the terms of trees, it means that uh, left leaf is never unary. So we never have a situation like this. So we never have a subturn of this shape. So this node, this left node, is never a unary node. Uh, okay, and uh, now uh, the, the last definition is uh, uh, about free in the composableness, in the composability, uh, namely uh, in the case of those terms that we have here, mm, we always uh, joined the uh, joint unary nodes with leaves, and uh, as we see these nodes are not very informative, informative, so we can just skip them. And when we skip them, we want the resulting uh, map or graph to be uh, internally free connected. And it means that if we remove any two edges, but the two uh, incident to the root ones, then the map or the graph has to become, uh, has to remain connected. So I think I will again show a figure. It's much easier to understand what's going on. So of course it will look like this. So we obtain a graph that looks like that. Then after this operation, we remove the leaves and this resulting graph has to be uh, free connected. But there is this uh, adverb internally free connected and it means that removing these two edges does not count. So removing any over pair of edges cannot lead to uh, disconnecting this, uh, this graph. So I have a, an example of a term that violates this condition. Uh, so let us look at this picture. First, we join the leaves with unary nodes. Then we forget about the leaves. We obtain a graph that looks like that. And for example, if we choose these two edges, uh, then the whole structure becomes disconnected. OK, I hope uh, these notions are uh, now well defined. So these are uh, the objects we are interested in. These are lambda terms, which are planar, which, uh, are, which are beta normal, and, uh, and also free in the composable. So uh, this, uh, the, the corresponding unary binary trees uh, have some particular properties. So the first one is whenever we have a term uh, of size at least three, then it starts with at least uh, three unary nodes. The second property tells us that uh, if we look at the at the term and forget about the uh, those unary nodes, then the left subtree is always trivial, namely it's always a single leaf. 
otherwise the free indecomposability condition would be violated. And the third condition, which is probably the most difficult one to, to describe, is such that uh, whenever we look at a subterm, which is proper, so it's not the whole tree, and it's rooted at the uh, at the highest uh, lambda or unary node uh, on the path of lambda. So in this case, there would be three um, three trees like that. Then the number of unary nodes in the right subtree. So we look uh, only at the right subtree. Uh, plus the lambdas on the path has to be uh, smaller than the number of leaves in the right subtree. And I will show the examples so, to under so that you could understand what I have just said. So let's look at this simple uh, subtree. It's rooted at the unary node. And now we count uh, all the unary nodes that appear in the right subtree. And we add uh, all unary nodes that are on the path here. So it, it makes one, of course. And then we look at the right subtree and uh, count all the leaves that are in this subtree. And in this subtree, we have three leaves. And we see that, indeed, three is uh, greater than one. So when we look at another example, here we have one unary node and we have two leaves in the right subtree. And again, this condition is satisfied. And for the big one, uh, well, uh, we count the right leaves, that's easy, that's six. But as for the unary nodes, we count all the unary nodes that are in the right subtree, and we add these top ones. So that's why we obtain three here. And of course, six is greater than three, so this condition is satisfied uh, in this case. And uh, I'm not sure, but probably these three condition, conditions uh, that's what we conjecture. These three conditions uh, should be enough to describe uh, lambda terms that satisfy all these properties that we're interested in. Okay, uh, and now uh, when we have uh, these trees, we can only look now at unary binary trees because we know which unary node is connected to which leaf, so we can forget about the pointers, and now we do some preprocessing on these trees. So the first operation that we do is skipping all unary nodes that are above, because this number is determined by the difference between the number of all leaves here and the number of all unary nodes. We just have to add all the missing unary nodes here. So we can skip this upper part. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I mean, use this device, so it takes time. Uh, okay, so that's one thing. And the other thing is this strange operation of sending gifts. And I don't want to give a formal definition. I will show an example of what we do. So uh, we look at the rightmost um, path of uh, unary nodes, but we care only about the uh, about uh, unary nodes uh, ordered via this tree. So it means that we also look at this unary node here. It is the right, uh, the right unary node for us. And now, when we do that, we look at all left subtrees. So these left subtrees are now uh, in those encircled by these nice curves. And what we do next is we shift all of them one level up. We have to remember that this tree here is trivial. This is only a leaf. So we never need to shift anything from here. So all of those uh, all of those bubbles are now uh, moved one level up. So after this operation, we have to obtain a tree that looks like that. And no wonder this leaf here remains uh, a lonely. This tree here becomes uh, simply a leaf. And this will be an important part in our bijection. So this sending gift part means that we have some linear order on some subtrees, and we just move them one level up. OK, so when we perform this preprocessing, we obtain some unary binary tree. And now we can uh, decompose it into uh, 
maximal binary parts with some unary paths. So we can see now that every tree can be represented by some binary trees with some placeholders marked and uh, then the number of unary nodes and so on and so on. So this is the decomposition we'll be interested in. Uh, here I just gave a definition of a, what it means to, for a planar rooted map to be a, to be bicubic because I started with bicubic maps. It's not important for us, so I'll just say that these maps are bipartite and cubic, but it was difficult for us to deal with maps, and we decided to deal with uh, uh, overstructured structures, namely beta zero one trees, um, because they are enumerated by the same uh, sequence, and beta zero one trees are uh, trees that are uh, rooted, they are plain, and they are of any arity. Uh, but what is important is that every leaf is labeled with one, uh, with zero. Every uh, parent is labeled uh, by one of the labels from zero up to the sum of the labels of its children plus one. And uh, another uh, node that has a determined label is the root, namely the root is uh, equal to the, the label of the root is equal to the sum of its children's labels uh, plus one. Okay, so uh, this is what I have already mentioned. So now let's play a little bit with beta zero one trees. Here are some examples of beta zero one trees. So let me recall every leaf is labeled with zero. Then when we go up, uh, we can, uh, for example, here we have to, we can choose from either zero or one. In this case, here we can choose either zero or one because we add uh, the labels in for children and uh, and make it greater by one. And for example, a more interesting case, which is more interesting, for example, mm, I don't know, I made a lot of jumps here. So uh, this one, this is one plus two, and we can increase it by one if we want, but it could be three, for example. So these are examples of beta zero one trees and the conjecture states that these trees are in the bijection with uh, our lambda terms. So the whole, uh, our goal is to know how to decompose beta zero one trees so that uh, it corresponds nicely to the decomposition of lambda terms. So for this reason, we define the so-called beta zero one bricks or bricks for brevity. And this will be beta zero one trees uh, which have just one leaf, so they have no binary nodes, with its uh, root removed. We know that in beta zero one trees, the label of the root is determined, so we don't need it here because it doesn't give us any new information. So these are all possible bricks, and as you can see or guess, the bricks are enumerated by Catalan numbers. And it did. Uh, we can show it easily, and we will use this uh, fact I will use this proof. So the first thing we do, we uh, label regular binary trees and we label them uh, uh, in such a way that every uh, internal node uh, gets a label which is which corresponds to the number of uh, right edges or right leaning edges on the path from the root to the uh, to the node that is being labeled. So this is the recursive definition of how we label them. And uh, of course, we start with zero because there are no right edges leading to this node. And on this light uh, leftmost path, we will only have zeros. But if we go a little bit down, the label of those nodes will increase. And here I, I can uh, draw an example. Sorry. OK, so we start with the root. It will be zero. And now we proceed recursively, and we remember that for this tree, we don't change anything. And for this right tree, we'll have to add one to every label. So uh, this one becomes zero, and we proceed recursively. So this is zero again. This will, uh, in this part, we have to increase by one. So this, this is one, and this is one. And similarly, here we have to increase the labels by one, then we don't need to go to the left. There are no internal nodes uh, on the left. So we go once more to the right. So it's two and here it's two again. 
Okay, so it's not maybe not uh, nicely drawn, but this is how we uh, how we label binary trees. And now, how do we translate bricks to trees? So whenever we have a brick, we find the um, highest zero. There is always at least one zero in a brick, and then we bend it and translate it recursively. This time, uh, decreasing the labels in this right tree. So let's say we have such a brick. So what happens if we want to translate it to a tree? We look at this highest zero and we bend it. So this will go down. So we have zero. And for this part, I maybe shouldn't say down, I should maybe say right. And this is left. So we bend this uh, left one. Where do we bend it? We bend it where the highest zero is, so it's this zero. So to the right, we have nothing, and to the left, we have this tree. So it makes zero, one, and two. I can also give, oh, I have already given a label here. It's zero, 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 one, and two. And to the right, we have one, one, and one, one gives us one and one. So this is how we translate bricks to trees. We can, of course, remove the labels. It doesn't matter whether we have a label tree or not. And in a very similar way, we translate trees to bricks. And so I'm not going into the details. It's straightforward how we do that. So this is an example. I will skip it. And as I said, our ultimate goal is to know how to uh, decompose. I to interrupt you, but your time is nearly up. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, so we want to know how to decompose those uh, beta zero one trees and how to decompose uh, lambda, how to encode lambda terms. Uh, the important thing is that in our candidate for a bijection, the number of those maximal binary trees, those maximal parts in lambda terms, uh, corresponds to the number of leaves in beta zero one trees, and it makes everything much easier. So we have uh, some trivial cases. I will steal five minutes because I started five minutes later. <laughs> okay, so the trivial case is when we have a, um, an empty tree, and this will correspond to this trivial linear term, the smallest one. And if we have uh, an over trivial case, namely the um, beta zero one tree is just a single node, then we have an over the next smallest lambda term, which is uh, this one. And we see that we can just skip this and skip this. This is skipping those head unary nodes, and then we translate what is left. So for this binary node here, it's just zero and it corresponds to, to zero. Uh, now, if we have a nice situation, uh, namely there are, ah, the, the easiest case is when we have just one leaf in beta zero one trees, uh, then uh, the decomposition uh, is uh, straightforward. Namely, uh, we just create a brick out of a beta zero one tree. So we forget about this top node, then we translate it to a binary tree, and then we add this missing left uh, single node and add an appropriate number of unary nodes. So this is the bu first building block that we have. So lambda trees with no, uh, lambda terms with no unary nodes in this part are just generated by Catalan numbers. Okay, so if we have uh, such a, a, a path, such a binary tree, we just skip this one, we translate it to a binary tree and we get a lambda term that looks like that. Then if we have no jumps, it means, okay, I will skip what it means uh, being a jump, I can explain it later. If we have a nice situation, then the decomposition is also nice. So we always take the rightmost um, edge that is possible to be taken. And in this case, we take this six edges and then we just uh, draw, um, we just write what we obtain from this decomposition, and we add those pluses here to denote how many steps we have to go up to start a new edge. So here we had to go uh, one level up. Here we go to levels up, with double, and so on. And if we have the, those, we translate each of those uh, parts into binary trees and then we combine them in a very easy way, it will be always be the right leaning thing. The problem uh, appears when we have jumps, and this is a, ah, I've forgotten that we have this gift, so at the very end we have to give this uh, gift down. 
Okay, so the main part in our uh, in our research research are jumps, and the jumps are those nodes that are not roots, but they are greater by at least two than the rightmost child. So in this case, uh, those jumps are uh, shown how they look like. So uh, here we see that two is greater by at least two than zero, three is greater than one, much greater, and four is much greater than two. So in, and two is much greater than zero. So in the sec third case, we have two jumps. And uh, I, yeah, I have no time to discuss the jumps, but we have distinguished three kinds of jumps, the green, red, and blue, and they dictate somehow the decomposition of trees. But it's, uh, I knew that I would need more part because for every jump we have some special uh, translation which translate us uh, one brick into another and tell us then how to uh, make the combination and how to cut out uh, those things. So I have some examples so the slides will be available. Maybe you can uh, go through them. I think it's uh, more illustrative to look at those examples uh, than just listening to me. But anyway, in this very example, you can see that now we don't take the whole thing out. This time we just take an edge which consists of these two vertices. So it's much more involved than before. Okay, I know I have to stop. So I will stop at this okay. point. So thank you very much, Kasia. Thank you very much. Very colorful talk. So we are quite over time, but maybe we have time for a very quick question. We can we can postpone all the discussion, I guess, into the example section or on Discord uh, on the open problem session because there, I guess, you can maybe then explain in detail what kind of problems you have there. Yeah. But could could I just ask a question? So, Kasia, so could you say again? I mean, what exactly is missing from the bijection? Okay, yeah. so I didn't uh, present everything that I had here, but we have these three kinds of jumps, and we know uh, what to do uh, when we have just a single kind of jumps in a tree, uh, just one particular kind of jumps, but we get lost if there are many different kinds of jumps. So if th those, mm -hmm. they are interleaving. So the character of a jump is determined by, uh, by this paths on which they lie. So if we have a path like that, it dictates the character of a jump. And then could we you, know sorry, how to- Sorry, could, I, could you just back up just, so you, you're building a function from beta zero one trees to-, to three, To those lambda terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those lambda terms. Okay. Or the other way around. So. Or the other way around. So, yeah, yeah. Based but there are some cases the that are of the lambda terms. The, the comp what, the, what's the idea? Sorry. Go, go ahead. So, okay, so uh, maybe I will quickly draw an example. Oh, here I have some space, so don't bother about what we have here. If we have a case uh, like of a term like this, then uh, in this right tree, we have two kinds of, okay, uh, I mentioned jump, uh, gifts. So the first operation that we perform is sending this thing here. Okay, mm -hmm. and when we send it here, then we have unary nodes uh, in both subtrees, in the right and the left, and it corresponds to some kind of a jump in uh, in, uh, in beta zero one trees. Mm -hmm. And then we, when there are many situations like that, at some point we get lost about how to proceed recursively for this. Mm -hmm. So we have some building blocks. We know, for example, how to deal with this case, with some more involved ones, but there is a level where we where we are lost. We don't know what happens if there is a subturn that corresponds to a red jump inside the subturn that corresponds to a blue jump and so on. If it's there are too many levels of those, we don't know how to translate those. Okay. And just so the, the beta zero one trees were known to be in bijection with bicubic planar maps. Yes, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. And any, what about anything else in that diagram you showed? Are they to oh, I, mean, I have tried that? to work for a while uh, with uh, the with the grid trees by Wenji, yeah. but then Guanro had a new idea about those beta zero one trees, and we finally uh, stunk again doing these things. Okay. 
thank you again. Yeah, I knew that 35 minutes wouldn't be enough for this, so I would be really happy if uh, I could discuss it with anybody interested. So, so Alex has just created some couple of more channels on the Discord server to continue discussing the different talks. So, so we can go ahead and discuss the, for all of the talks afterwards in Discord. Okay, so. I will stop sharing because it's time. It's a perfect thank you, Kasha. And while well, we're supposed to start right now.